Welcome back everybody. Today's an exciting day. I am reviewing a bag from Saddleback Leather. This is called the Urban Tote. And this was sent to me by Saddleback Leather to review. These are my honest opinions, but I always wanna make sure that you know this bag was sent to me for free to review. And I've been experiencing this for about 13, 14 days. And today it is now available at 12 p.m. Central Time. I'm going to post this right when it's available so you guys have an opportunity to check out Saddleback's website, check out their photos. This is offered in all four colors. And um, what do you think? I mean, I have so much to say. I don't know where to start. But why don't I zoom you in quickly and just kind of show you what this bag has to offer. And I'll go into my opinions in a second. Here we go. So this is the color chestnut. I'm wanting to make sure that you can see beyond the glare. Look at those amazing stretch marks. When have stretch marks ever been a good thing? Right now. And this is, um, I didn't have a choice in what color they were sending me. Um, everybody knows I'm a tobacco girl. But when this came, I was like, ooh, hello chestnut. This is not that bad. I think chestnut normally reads a little more formal, a little more high end, and I'm quite a casual girl. So here's the base. There are no feet, and you can see that I'm already scratching it up a bit, which I don't mind. The seams are on the outside for this bag, which are flawlessly done. Um, this is considered the front of the bag. And you can see right here is it's a Saddleback Leather Co. in their new updated logo. On the back we have one pocket and this is their logo of their black lab. His name was Blue, may he rest in peace. Here's a front pocket. So you can see it actually is usable. It's a bit tight. I'll get into that a little bit later in the video. Um, so there's the overall double straps. I'll talk about these straps and what my opinion now is on them. And they are adjustable here and here. I like that asymmetrical look. Okay, so this is going to retail for $169. I think that's a pretty good price because it can hold a surprisingly large amount of things and it has more of a petite silhouette. You'll see this is more of a triangle silhouette. This is extremely lightweight. This is my highlight point of this bag. Well, two things, um, the weight and the base. This base is phenomenal. It's five inches in depth and the weight of this bag is phenomenal. It's one pound, five ounces. And we all love Saddleback leather, but what comes with Saddleback leather is weight. It's Rarely, rarely do they provide us really a lightweight bag, but that's okay because they're bringing full grain leather, which is the best, best leather on the market, um, the best hardware that they can provide for us, amazing stitching, just amazing materials, and that comes with weight. And so when I picked up this box from my front door, I was so excited to receive something from Saddleback, I was like, wait a minute, how small is this bag? It's so light. And I pull it out of the box, and I'm like, oh, well this isn't that small. Can you, can you see for proportions? It's not that small. Do you wanna go into dimensions? Why not? We have nine and a half wide by nine in height. With that five inches of depth. And how that depth works is it kinda of goes narrower to the top. When it's full, there's no closure. Just about this much opens up. And I mean, that's not too bad. I measured it to be about two inches at the top here. Right now it kind of looks more like one inch. And um, that's why it's so light, is because it's smaller, there's no fuss, no extra hardware, no extra buckles, no extra D-rings. And they provided us a nice medium small bag. Let me talk more about the base. This base, I'm, I'm raving about it, but what's so great about it? Okay, so when I'm driving, I have my bag in the passenger seat, it has not fallen over. 
um, when it's on the floor of the passenger seat, it has not fallen over while driving. When I'm sitting on the sofa and it's in a couch cushion next to me, not falling over. On the floor at church, not falling over. It's not falling over and I love that because I actually love slouchy bags and they fall over. I don't tend to like structured bags, but this one has just a nice structure to it. That triangle silhouette I keep mentioning, it's more feminine. It has a nice just tapered close, closure. With that base, we can get so much in here as well. Do you want to see what's in here right now? I actually have a couple of bags in front of me, so I'm going to show you bag size comparisons, but why don't I empty this out? while I'm talking about it. Okay, here we go. It's pretty full. Let's make sure you can see how much more can go in the top. So I really filled up the base with shorter items. Um, I laid my largest things horizontal because I think if you fill it up too high, you're gonna have just a huge wide opening. So let's see how I layered this in here. Here is the long tried for wallet in tobacco. You're going to see a lot of tobacco. Um, this is from Saddleback Leather and that was standing up. That was standing up tall. This is my only wallet from Love 41 Saddleback Leather right now so I can't compare any other wallets for you. Um, here is a Saddleback Leather iPad mini in tobacco. <laughs> Maybe I needed to expand my horizons and try a, hor uh, try a chestnut. So that fit just fine going horizontal and vertical. Let me show you. This is what vertical looks like. It just clears, but not by much. So let's stick to horizontal for that. What else is in here? This is my Midori Traveler's Notebook. You know me, my fake one. So that's going horizontal. And let's try it vertical. Just clears, but not by much. Let's stick to horizontal for this one. And I just have whipping post pouch with some odds and ends. These things were floating around. Lip gloss, mascara, and a pen. Two lip glosses and some trail mix, why not? Okay, so now that the bag's empty, I can show you what it offers on the inside, and that is one pocket. One pocket here, and nothing on this side. This is the suede pigskin lining, which is brighter, or excuse me, it's lighter material, so it is easy to see everything in there. I mean, even the camera's picking up the base. Sometimes I show you guys the inside of my bags, and I go through editing, and I realize it's just a big black hole, and you can't see anything. So let's talk about this pocket. You're going to see that it's sharing the same stitching line as the outside pocket. And I will show you my phone. Here it is. I will show you my phone fitting on the inside pocket. This is a Samsung Galaxy S7. It's just as far down as it can go. My friend with an iPhone 8 was able to put her phone in there just fine. It does come out above the pocket, but it is still below the rim of the top of the bag. I will show you my cell phone in the front pocket. There it looks. I'm not using this front pocket that much. I would use it for, you know those ticket stubs when you go in a parking garage? I'd put that much. I would put a movie ticket. I would put a receipt. I'd put very thinner items in the front. You can put whatever you want, but this is what I'm gonna do. And I'm going to use my more bulky things here. I would say when this is full, this is a little tighter. I did wonder why didn't they put a pocket on either side of the walls? And I think it's because they wanted the front of it to have a nice clean silhouette because this is where their logo is and they didn't necessarily want the front to have a pocket on it. So why don't we go into comparing um, the Urban Tote with some other Saddleback Leather or Love 41 products I have that you might also have so you can kind of get an idea of where it stands in the lineup of bags. So let's first compare it to the Large Hobo from Saddleback Leather. This has been the longest, um, 
I've owned this bag the longest out of any Saddleback leather bag that I own and I still love it. This is the Large Hobo in Tobacco. And the dimensions of this are uh, seven and three fourths wide. Nope, 10 and three fourths wide by 10 in height by four and a half in depth. And so I mentioned this is nine and a half wide by nine in height with five inches in depth. So let me hold them up at the same time on the same plane. So these are pretty similar in size, very different aesthetics. Um, I added the strap through the D-ring to make a top handle. The bag does not come with the top handle, but you can make one, I have a video on it. Um, so that's pretty comparable right there. Well, 10 and seven, uh, 10 and three fourths in width and nine in width. So an inch and three fourths wider. That is pretty significant. Let's see, it makes up in base. This is four and a half and this is five. I mean, look at that. Whenever you're looking at a bag that's small, get it with some depth. It can be small everywhere else, but if it has depth, you're gonna be able to hold so much more. I don't like the bags that are tall and narrow because you can't put as much stuff in it. But when, they're, when they have depth, they're great. So here's the back. They both have back pockets. This runs full length of the bag and all the way down. So this is a very big pocket. And this is just smaller. They both have interior pockets. Just one interior pocket. So closures are different. I mean, these are different, but this one is going to be smaller. So let's compare it now to Saddleback Leathers, Book Bag, and Tobacco. In Tobacco, everything's tobacco. I don't have the measurements offhand, but you could look these up. So let me um, put them on the same plane. So Book Bag, smaller by quite a bit in height. Check out depth. There you go. Look at that, Urban Tote. Steals the show there. And then whip. I love my um, book bag. This goes on every single trip. It's small enough to be crossbody that you can kind of have your luggage a carry on and then this crossbody and they never really stop you. One time they stopped me, but then they were really like, well, it's really small. Just go on the board, go on the plane. All right, let's compare it to the large Deathel which is a beast. This is from Love 41 in the color tobacco. It's gonna get annoying when I'm editing this every time I say it like that. So, very different in size, but kind of similar in depth. Look at this, I believe this is seven inches in depth. This is five. So much smaller. Um, and then we'll do the side profiles. Um, my husband, Mark, he was, I showed him, I'm like, hey, it's in chestnut. Do you think I'll like it? And he's like, you know what? It's a much more feminine structured classic looking bags. And I feel like chestnut is very much a feminine, like formal color. Tobacco is much more casual. So I feel like this is a good buy for being in chestnut. Okay, I think I went through everything I wanted to highlight with this bag. I would say my experience has been really good. I'm just such a fan of the lightweight and the great base. And um, I understand that people will feel like wanting a closure is important. And when I'm modeling this bag, I'll kind of show this as well. But your arm, you can kind of see me do it. As your arm is resting, it's kind of pinching the top closed. I would say for everyday carry, I'm very comfortable with this. I wouldn't necessarily use something that doesn't have a closure when I'm traveling internationally or if I'm uh, on like a commuter train or something like that. But um, for everyday life, it's just nice to be in and out really easily. Um, and there you go. Let's readjust the camera and I'll model it for you. So I am 5'5". Five five. Here is the bag on its shortest setting. Let's have it so the front is facing out. Um, here you go. It's really comfortable. Um, the uh, buckles are on the bag, so there's nothing touching anywhere on your shoulder bone or your collarbone or anything like that. And let me quickly adjust it to be the setting I prefer. Here's what I found to be my preference. Um, this is at 
nine inches from the beginning to the hole. Um, I don't know, I just kind of played around with the different heights and this one really worked well for me. I kind of think I like having my thumb rest right here. Um, there you go. And I'll adjust it again for the longest setting. And here again is the longest setting. Um, I do like to put, let me zoom in on this. I like to put the longest setting on the second to last hole. Let me show you what happens if I put it on the last hole. It works, but it doesn't really catch the extra tab right here, and I would rather it catch that tab. So there you go. Thank you for watching. I wanted to mention, if you go to my Instagram account, The Perfect Leather Bag, you will see tons of photos of me posting this the next week, or probably I might blast them all on the same day. Just so you can see a lot of different outfits and scenarios of me wearing this bag. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys later.